Pat Farball with St. Francis head football coach Chris Valerio. His team on a bye last week, but fans, they return to action on Saturday out in Pittsburgh at Art Rooney Field. They will take on Duquesne. The game kicks off at 3 p.m. and it will be shown on ESPN3. The voice of Northeast Conference football, Paul Dottino on the play-by-play. Kevin Gilbride, the former Chargers head coach and longtime NFL offensive coordinator on the color. Chris, first thing I want to ask you, we had the bye. We were coming off the loss against Bryant, but this league is wide open. Four games to play. You got the Bulldogs and the Pioneers at 3-1, and one, the Flash and the Dukes at 2-1, and one, a big game in that regard. But were you able to impress upon your players that with this wide open league, there with four games to play, all conference games, there's a lot at stake and still a lot to play for? Yeah, I think the... What we really tried to tell the team was, don't you know? Don't think about the what ifs. You know, let's just concentrate on us. Let's just concentrate on getting better each week. It's concentrate on you know, getting better as a team, as an individual. The scoreboard will take care of itself, but we got to take care of, of us. Control what we can control, and, and that that was our message to the team. And you know, if it happens, it happens. But you know, this is just another game. Uh, it's another week. Obviously, it's a rivalry, and you know, rivalries are, are more special. Um, but you know, this, Duquesne, any time that you go up here, you know what you're getting, you know. So we know we're getting, we're going to get their best. Uh, you know, what happened to them last week can happen to anybody. And we've told that to our team. Uh, but you, anytime you go to a, a Duquesne field with, with their head coach, you're going to get their best. Jerry Schmidt is the head coach, and they've been very good for a long time. Chris was alluding to last week's game. What happened, fans? They lost up in Fairfield, Connecticut, to Sacred Heart, 31-13. to That snapped a four-game win streak. The Dukes, I mentioned their conference mark. They're 4-2 and two overall, 2-1 two and one in conference play. And by the way, they were the first team in the Northeast Conference to beat an FBS team earlier this year, 28-26 to win at Ohio University. In that 31-13 to loss a week ago at Sacred Heart, their running back Garrett Owens, he was uh, – Impressive in that performance. He's a transfer from Mercyhurst fans. He transferred before the spring season to Duquesne and earned second team all conference honors in the spring. 11 carries, 113 yards up at Sacred Heart. He had a 75 yard touchdown on the second play of the game. It'll be important to know where Owens is at if we want to win on Saturday. Yeah, so it's always important to know where he's at. Obviously, he showed you his talents, uh, you know, on that 75-yard run, but he's showing his talents from from last spring to this year. Uh, very talented uh, running back. Obviously, they got a talented quarterback, um, and, and they got, you know, some of the best receivers in the conference. So they're very well balanced. Uh, they're big up front. Probably the you know the best offensive line uh, we're going to see, uh, and you know they're well coached. And, you know, obviously, defensively they fly around big up front. You know, they got linebackers that fill that get downhill fast. They're aggressive. Uh, their secondary is very aggressive. So I mean, there's really no weaknesses with with Duquesne. There really isn't. I mean, you have to play a flawless game, and that's what's going to take for us. Uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere up there and, and we're looking forward to uh, you know competing against one of the best what's the quarterback do well Chris Darius Perante he's a transfer from Rhode Island fans didn't play well up at Sacred Heart seven for 16 for 45 yards and a pick but on the season he's completed 62 percent of his passes eight TDs three interceptions uh, what does he uh, do especially well you know, he controls the game for them. Uh, you know, obviously, he reads the defense as well. He reads the front well. He knows when to get rid of the ball. Uh, he knows where his receiver should be. Uh, so, he, you know, he controls the game for them. And, uh, you know, he, he's a guy that uh, you got to know where he's at because if you let him go, he can beat you with his legs as well. So, again, we got to play uh, fundamentally sound football up there. Probably the two most balanced offenses facing off against one another fans in Pittsburgh – Duquesne pass run balance, 154 on average on the ground, 165 through the air. The flash equally balanced, 163 on the ground, 183 through the air. One of the facets of the game, Chris, that I think might be a difference maker is you have some of the top specialists going head-to-head this weekend. Michael Baraducci, the punter for Duquesne, he leads the league at 42.3 per punt. Jordan Slaby, two-time Northeast Conference Special Teams Player of the Week. He's at 40.1 yards per punt. And then two of the top kickers in the league, uh, Brian Brodzewicz, 
the Duquesne kicker, perfect on field goals this year, 9 of 9. The freshman from Bellwood, Alex Schmoke for us, 7 for 8. Good specialist. That could be the difference in the team that picks up the win on Saturday. Yeah, uh, very well coached. Uh, special teams on both sides of the ball. Uh, they're very aggressive, and we're going to have to control them. I mean, uh, they got fakes in. I mean, they're very dynamic. So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to have to be ready for everything. Uh, and, and we're looking forward to it. Uh, but you're right. I mean, it may come down to that last minute field goal or that punt that flips the whole game. You know, we don't know. But uh, obviously, we know they're capable of doing it. Um, and, you know, we, we have to be able to answer the call when. when it's our turn to do it. So, Duquesne, uh, the last, well, really since you've been here, there's been a lot of people with St. Francis ties on the coaching staff. You recruit, recruit the Western Pennsylvania Interscholastic Athletic League, the Whippeal heavily. The players in our locker room, a lot of them know. The players on Mark Schmidt's team, Whippeal players. Do you worry at all, uh, or does it vary from team to team? Those emotions, friends that you're going at, there's ties between the coaching staff is that a concern for you at all beyond just the x's and o's that you have to make sure you keep those in check yeah it's it, it, obviously a very emotional game um you know you're going against past players uh, you know people that you know coaches that you know um but you got to keep that all in check and that's why you know it's just another game uh, obviously it's going to be turned up a little bit uh, because of that emotion but you know we have to just face this as another game and it's another week we have to get better uh, and just go up and compete and give it our all and that's all we can do. Chris thank you good luck out at Art Rooney Field on Saturday. I appreciate it Pat and thanks for your support. Pat Farber with St. Francis redshirt sophomore wide receiver Katero Summers. Big opportunity for Katero and his teammates this weekend as we travel out to Pittsburgh to take on Duquesne and Art Rooney Field at 3 p.m. on Saturday. It was the bye week last week for Mr. Summers and the Flash. Katero has been just as consistent as any player on any side of the ball, offense, defense, and special teams this year. He has 31 catches fans for 442 yards and six touchdowns, six TDs in the last five games, by the way. Second in the conference in receiving yards per game at 63.4, third in catches per game at 4.4, and you take out the kickers, he actually leads the league in scoring at 4.3 points per game. Katero, I want to ask you, the team... Uh, got off to a good start in conference play, picked up the two wins, then the 18-17 loss before a bye. That's always tough. Uh, do you feel like uh, the, the squad has bounced back and is ready to go at Duquesne this Saturday? Oh, absolutely. We had a week off and we had an extra week of practice to come prepare. We're all hungry and ready to get back that, uh, ready to get back out there and get a win. An accounting major from Coatesville, Pennsylvania and Coatesville High School. I want to ask you about the offense. Uh, do you feel like we got four to play? We got seven and four to play. Do you feel comfortable with where it's at right now? I feel absolutely comfortable. I trust my guys and I know that they're ready to get out there and get a win just as hungry as I am. So I'm ready. We're ready. Balance in the offense has been particularly impressive. Lavelle Armstead, Marcus DeShields carrying most, getting most of the carries. And, and the passing, you've led the way receiving, but that balance, Chris and I have talked about that. Do you believe as one of the leaders on the offense that that is an important facet of it working efficiently and working well? Oh, yeah, for sure. Since I've been here, since my freshman year to this year, we haven't really had a strong run game. But this year with Marcus and Lavelle coming in and making a spark on the uh, running the ball. It's been great for our offense. So you've been here since the fall of 2018. Didn't play that season. Played some in 19. Then no season because of the pandemic in 2020. It was a long waiting game for you. Can you talk a little bit about that and how good it feels to to be out there and, and hitting other people in the fall of 21? I mean, yeah, it was tough, you know, just sitting back at home, just training, training, training. And then 2020, obviously our season got canceled, but some teams played, so that was really hard to watch. But I'm just grateful that we're back out here and be able to play the game we all love. And you're from Coatesville. I mentioned that, Coatesville High School, which is one Red of the Raiders. fans. <laughs> the Red Raiders. One of the top programs in the state. A shout-out uh, to the Red Raiders program. And you played for a St. Francis alum, Matt Ortega. Yes, and his son, Ricky, the quarterback now at Villanova, uh, he was your quarterback your senior season. Can you talk about that St. Francis tie-in a little bit? Well, I mean, 
when I was being recruited at Coach O, he definitely wanted me to come here a lot. You know, he came up here with me on visits and everything. So we just really loved the school, and I just had to come here. And uh, Ricky, great quarterback. I mean, I love playing with him. One of the best quarterbacks I've ever played, and I'm excited to see what he does at Nova. And how is Coatesville doing this year? Are they uh, doing well in the fall 21? Oh, yeah, Coatesville, you know, we're getting things done always. <laughs> now, you're not from there originally. You moved f from there, uh, from the New England area to Coatesville when you were young. Yep, I was, uh, I'm was. i originally from Providence, Rhode Island, and I was about 11 years old. We moved over here to Coatesville. And that's the reason that you're a Brady fan, having those formative years up in Providence? That's right. Go Pats. <laughs> and uh, you're a confident player. We see that on the field. Uh, you're also pretty confident in your basketball skills. We have a lot of athletes. We've talked about this before. You, uh, If you had to rank the players on the team, where are you putting yourself? Oh, number one, easy, hands down, number one. <laughs> Slawoski, Justin Slawoski, pretty good player uh, out in Greensburg during his high school days. He had some praise for you as well. Who would come closest to giving you a game on your squad this year? It used to be EJ Jenkins, but he's transferred, so now I'd say Brandon Lisenby. All right, Brandon Lisenby, one of your fellow receivers. Well, listen, Katero, it's been great watching you play. It's been so fun. Watching that Eastern Michigan game, seeing you on the field, and you play with a joy out there. It makes it fun to watch. Four to go. Make the most of the opportunities you have the rest of the way. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, guys.